Welcome to Tomorrow's World Today, a show dedicated to the discovery of innovation and cutting edge technology. We showcase the latest developments from the greatest companies and smartest people in the world. Tomorrow's ideas are out there, and through our journey of inspiration, we will uncover the technology of the future. This is Inventionland World Headquarters. Here now is George Davison. Hey everyone, welcome to Tomorrow's World Today. I'm your host, George Davis. Sometimes it's the simplest everyday things that make the biggest difference. Isn't the smell of fresh laundry refreshing? It can lift the spirits of people worldwide. But have you ever wondered exactly how your laundry detergent gets your clothes vibrant and clean? Let's find out. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the chemistry behind laundry and the ingredients that remove stains and odors while extending your clothing's lifespan. What I wanna know is, how is detergent being created to improve sustainability and energy and water conservation? And what is the most innovative laundry product out there? We'll dig into one of America's oldest and most innovative household names to see how laundry went from a time and labor intensive chore to a simple push of a button on a high efficiency appliance with pause. I'll see you in Cincinnati. This is where it all started, the Ivory Dale building in Cincinnati, home of Procter & Gamble. Inside this building is where the company made soap as far back as the 1800s. In fact, this is where Tide was first invented in the 1940s. A century later, a company scientist named David Byerly was working to create the world's first synthetic laundry detergent. And he kept at it, even after the bigwigs at Procter & Gamble told him to give up. But Byerly wasn't gonna be easily stopped. After working in secret for 14 years, in 1946, he finally developed the prototype of a revolutionary new product that came to be known as Tide. It was an innovation that made laundry soap, including some of P&G's own soap-based products like Does, essentially obsolete. Today, Tide is in the laundry room of two out of every five homes in the United States. It brings in $3.5 billion a year for Procter & Gamble. You might say they've cleaned up on David Byerly's invention. I'm going to tour the Procter & Gamble Museum to go back in time to when Tide was first created. I'm curious to see the history of the product and how it was developed. I've got my own personal tour guide all lined up. Hey! Oh, hey, George! Welcome to the P&G Archives. Great to be here. So I understand you got to use one of these yesterday. Uh, in fact, I did. My triceps reminded me of that. This is how people had to wash clothes then. It required a tremendous amount of manual labor. And in the early 1900s, we moved to powders and flakes, still soap-based detergents. Now, there were a couple problems with these, though. One is it's really hard to get good lather in hard water from a soap-based detergent. The second big problem is soaps can leave behind something called soap scum in your fabric. So that is when we decided it was time to invent a heavy duty detergent and that takes us to Tide. Oh. So welcome to our Tide display. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute, what is that? Is that Byerly's box? That is, that is the original formula. This would have been in the early 40s when he would have been working on that. And you notice it still says product X because he didn't know what oh, to call it yet. Goodness. But that was the original formula which would lead to the 1946 launch of the Tide that we know today. Beautiful. And then as you know, consumers habits and laundry needs change, we would change the technologies. So, you know, moving from powders into liquids, creating things like the self-draining closure to reduce mess into solving problems outside of the laundry room, like Tide to Go. We use that. 
Oh, thank and you. then as we move forward too into new services and solutions like the Tide Eco Box, Tide Pods, and even Tide Dry Cleaners. With Tide's launch in 1946, PG officially moved from being a soap company to being a technology company. Yeah. And with that, we wanted to also innovate in advertising. And that's what I want to show you next. So let me go get a couple things. Great. Tide launched right at the time when women were returning from the war effort. And of course, Tide hitting the market happened to perfectly coincide with several key historic moments. The beginning of post-war baby boom, the birth of the television industry, and the advent of the automatic laundry machine. Tide suddenly had a booming market and the perfect way to sell their product. I'd like to dig into how Tide was able to use this new medium to connect with consumers and build the brand into not just a household name, but the go-to laundry detergent. So George, I brought you an original Tide ad to take a look at. <laughs> the Wash Day Miracle. Called that because now with Tide, it, you could get your laundry done in hours instead of a full day. Yeah, that's big technology back in the day. That, the invention of Tide and going out to tell the story to the public about what it'll do for them. I mean, you have to demonstrate what a new technology does. And that's, of course, why we do the demo. Mm. And we still do, where we show side-by-sides, you know, two shirts, two socks, whatever, the before and the after. Basically, demos make a promise that then the product has to deliver. So I know that you need to get on to get a behind the scenes on Tide Pods. So thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Shane. Hi, Mary. Hey, Hi, George. Hi, Fabrizio. Hey, George. So this is the Innovation Center. You call it the I, huh? That's right. And let me show you one of our biggest innovation, Tide Pods. This is a Tide Pod, and it's a very concentrated detergent. To make it, a hundred scientists had to work for eight years, and we got 50 patents out of it. There are several cleaning ingredients in here, like surfactants and cold water enzymes. We also now have antioxidants. One of the reasons we can put all those ingredients here is because we have three chambers that allow them not to combine too early and react with each other. But yet it dissolves very quickly. And it does because we have this film that uh, will resist quite a bit of pressure, but yet in water will dissolve even in the coldest of conditions. Let me show you. All right. So let's watch this dissolve. Wow, that's fantastic. Let me show you something else. Okay, I Mary. wanted to share our latest innovation from Tide Pods, which is Tide Power Pods Hygienic Clean Heavy Duty. Turns out only 30% of laundry soils are food stains, things that you can see. 70% of laundry soils are invisible, and they come from our bodies. So they're things like the one liter of sweat that our bodies produce throughout a day mm. with 10 grams of salt. And 40 grams of sebum, it's the sebum that causes acne, and then um, 2 billion skin cells. In one day, this is what our bodies produce. They are transferred to our clothes. And so I, I have two shirts here for you. One was washed with high power pods. The other one was washed with a competitive detergent. Well, let's look for invisible soils with our trusty UV light. All right. Right here, I can see the uh, stains right here. The unique innovation in Tide Power Pods Hygienic Clean Heavy Duty is that we have surfactants and enzymes and a mix of multiple cleaning ingredients in the highest concentration that can remove not only the visible stains like the food stains, but also these invisible body soils so that your clothes stay white and bright instead mm. of yellow. Well, I really like that idea because I was always wondering why some of the clothes that we have are turning yellow when I don't see any yellow on the clothes, but over time that will turn yellow and begin to have odor. Is that correct? Absolutely, yes. If it's not removed deep down at the fiber level like they are with the Tide Power Pods, it will cause odors and yellowing over time. Hmm. 
Great innovation. If you like these innovations, let's go and show you Ivorydale Technical Center all right. where all of this magic happens. Love to see it. Hey, Diane. Hi, Dan. So we're going to take you through how the technical testing works. We're testing some malodor technologies in this little detergent uh, syringe, some liquid detergent. That'll shoot into the washing machine, little tiny washing machine. And then fabrics will automatically deploy and a wash cycle with, will start. My goodness. So what, what this is, you know, 10 little mini clothes washers here. Indeed. And these little syringes inject new That's right. formulas? That's right. Into there? That's fabulous. What a unique piece of machinery. Indeed, yeah. Speaking of many, this has to be the world's smallest laundry bag. That's right. If the washing machine is small, everything needs to scale down. You know, the clothes need to be small. The stains we test need to be small as well. And by doing it this small, we save on water, we save on chemicals. Sometimes the chemicals we test are only available at the beginning in very small amounts. So this way we can do more testing with less amount and it uh, spends less energy. Sounds more sustainable, more, more environmental. That's right. Uh, and also more economical. So out of the lab, there's 20,000 experiments tested in here to find a way to invent a better way to clean? Yes, better, better detergents for the consumer. So mm -hmm. Tide works every, every time in every wash condition with every fabric and the different soils that consumers have. My Tide uh, detergent, I can do that in cold water, and that was a big innovation, wasn't it? Most of the energy that is used in laundering is through heating the water in the wash. Mm -hmm. If we can make a detergent, like we do, that works as well when it's cold, then consumers can save a lot of energy and reduce their environmental impact. So 80% less energy when you're doing your laundry because we're doing it in cold water with the invention of the enzymes that are inside Tide. Yes, the enzyme was invented in PNG and was tested in equipment like this. We have uh, equipment like this all over the world, so we test globally. And that's how we, we developed a better uh, cold water set of technologies for our detergents like, you know, Tide Pot. So the wash is done, and okay. we're gonna now take these fabrics that have been washed with uh, the malodor technologies. We're going to dry them out individually, okay. and they're gonna go into a jar, and we're gonna measure the headspace over it to see if we removed all the malodor that was in the fabric. Okay. So that is the uh, small scale testing we do. It's a more general testing. But for a detergent to work for all of the consumers of the world, and they all have different washing machines, we need to make sure we serve them. So for that, we'll go to Mary, which will show us the full-scale washing machines we have that represent all, of, all the world consumers. Hi, Mary. Hey, George. Well, Fabrizio said I should come see you because uh, you're going to teach me how you scale up technology. Absolutely. Scaling up is the right word. Uh, the flex wash that Fabrizio showed you is used to evaluate new technologies. But we have to confirm that those technologies are going to provide the stain removal, the odor removal, the whiteness and the brightness that we expect them to. And that's why we have to test in real world machines under real world conditions. p and is the number one fabric care company in the world. And that's why we sell Tide or in many other places called Ariel. Yeah. And we have to evaluate them in real world conditions using the washing machines that are found in those countries. This is a set of washing machines that are uh, very popular in Japan. Now you might ask yourself, how can you do wash testing? Aren't the conditions different in Japan, say in Tokyo, than they are here in Cincinnati? Yeah. And they absolutely are. And so what we have is this terrific piece of equipment where we can dial into the wash water the exact temperatures that we want that mimic the temperatures in Tokyo. But we can also mimic the um, water and the, the minerals and the metals that are also found in the wash water in Japan. Oh my goodness. Who would have ever thought you'd have computers figuring out water from all over the world and putting it into machines from all over the world here in Cincinnati. 
Yeah, who would have thought? But it's absolutely important so that consumers get the benefit that we say that they're going to get. Mary, it looks like a grocery store, but we're not actually in a grocery store right now. This is our retail technical center. This is where we bring in our retail partners to help them to envision what our new products lineup are going to look like on their store shelves. So all your products are here and displayed, and you also have your competition here, so you can start to figure that out from a marketing and display perspective, right? Well, let's see here. We have the new power pods. Let's talk about sustainability and where are we headed here? So Tide has been a leader in sustainability for over 35 years. Today, our packaging is 25% post-recycled materials. Our goal is to make that 100%. On the way to achieving that goal, we have committed by 2030 to reduce our use of virgin plastics by half. Excellent. We're also working to reduce our carbon footprint. Two main ways, our manufacturing sites are zero waste to landfill and utilize 100% renewable wind energy. Wow. The second way is designing our products to provide outstanding clean and cold water so that consumers can forego the hot water cycle and save energy that way. Wow, okay, so we have four big innovations here. We have a lot less plastic use in the future, the use of wind power in your factory, we have a zero waste coming out of the factory and we have cold water enzymes so we don't have to run our hot water tanks and consume as much of uh, Mother Nature's energy as we used to. That is a great story, Mary. I love it. Part of the future is here in the form of out-of-home laundry. It's all about the convenience of dropping off your laundry and picking it up. It's basically taking a chore off people's shoulders. You might say, a load off their minds. Come on, let's go meet Moses. Hey, Moses. Hey, George. Welcome to Tide Cleaners. It's great to be here and meet you finally. So this is one of our flagship stores for Tide Cleaners. I'd love to show you how that comes to life. Sounds great. George, let me show you how this 24-7 pickup kiosk works. All right. You can either bring your phone and scan it, or you can look up your phone number and easily be able to get your dry cleaning, whether you come at you know, 5 p.m. or whether you come at 1 a.m., whatever time that you need it, you can easily pick up your clothes. And this is really convenient for our guests yeah. to be able to come and grab their orders whenever they can come to the Tide Cleaners. So it, there are two items coming right now? Two items coming right now. It's a system that's connected to all of our uh, metal progetti in the actual Tide Cleaner store to be able to communicate and be able to bring the clothes directly to you. Look and at it, that. Oh yeah, so it will open it up in a second. And what we need to do is make sure that we're convenient for our guests. And we do this by obviously being able to provide for their needs as best as possible across all of our Tide Cleaners locations. Jeez, you guys have been busy. We have been busy, and, and busy really trying to deliver for our guests, because we gotta deliver whether they're coming into the store, whether we're delivering it to them with our contactless drop-off, or whether we are in the end trying to deliver for their needs in times of need such as COVID. Yes. And so one of the things that we worked against was how can we deliver for frontline responders mm -hmm. who were facing very stressful days working 24 hours a day and really looking for ways to lighten their load. And so what we did was through Tide Loads of Hope, we were able to provide free laundry and dry cleaning services to our frontline responders. Mm. Wow, Moses, what a rig. Yeah, this is our Tide Loads of Hope mobile laundromat truck. We've got six washers and dryers here and can do over 100 loads of laundry a day. And with our bigger truck, we can do even more. So the truck can move right into these disaster zones and start helping people and giving them some hope. I like that idea. We launched it during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. And since then, we've been able to expand it to other disasters. Wow, that's pretty innovative. Tide Loads of Hope was really set around disaster relief. We deployed our first 
mobile laundry unit to New Orleans in 2005 and have since expanded to other disasters such as tornadoes, floods, wildfires, and many more. Our Tide Loads of Hope truck has become a symbol of hope for families in need. When we give the clothes back clean, people are elated. It can make a world of difference during a time of chaos. So we've learned all about the history of Tide, from a revolutionary inventor, David Byerly, to all sorts of developments since then, including Tide Pods. As we all just saw, this group of innovators at Procter & Gamble, who've been awarded over 13,000 patents in their history, well, they're determined to increase the pace of innovation in the industry. We learned how they're developing laundry detergent that makes doing the laundry more energy and water efficient than ever. But right now, like I said, it's laundry day. Well, that's great, Mary, thank you. You know, I figure I've got about a year's worth of Tide in here I'll take home. Bye, Mary. George. Bye, Mary. George. Bye, Mary. George. <laughs>